on a journey to discover a life full of meaning with Jesus at the center of all things. We gather to discover our calling, scatter to live it out. One church, one mission, multiple locations with a single pursuit to impact Kansas City and beyond. Loving Jesus in response to His first love. Becoming like Jesus by the power of God's Spirit. Sharing Jesus because He is the hope of the world. What if a church led by prayer, united for something greater, became kingdom risk takers to reveal the life found in the Bible, to wrap around the lost, the last and the least in our city and around the world, to love and serve our neighbors, to build Christ-centered families, we will not rest until everyone knows they are loved as Christ has loved us. West Side Family Church. Loving Jesus. Becoming like Jesus. Sharing Jesus. We go further together. Good morning, West Side Family Church. Can we stand as we worship the Lord this morning? We're going to take some time out and call on the name of Jesus. Is that all right? Hallelujah. He shames every idol. He reigns without right.
a mighty name, the mighty name of Jesus. His name reigns forever. His glory reigns forever. His truth reigns forever. We will sing of his glory forever. our hands and worship this morning.
good and he is well. Welcome to SI Family Church. I'm so glad that you are here in the room and online. It's such a pleasure to see you this morning. We are in a new series. It is called More, and today we are talking about more peace. Wave at me if you need more peace. I need more peace. I desire more peace. And Dan Diebel is bringing that message. Go ahead and have a seat. We'll be back to worship with you after the message. What's up, Westside? Hey, we are so glad you're here. If you have not downloaded the church app, we would love for you to do it. Scan the QR code on the screen right now, right there. Come on, let's do it. Go. Hey, parents, have you registered your kids for Kids Gig yet? Registration closes May 19th. That's right. It's just around the corner. Do not wait one more day. If you have children ages 4 through 5th grade, don't let them miss out. Sign up today at www.westsidefamily.church backslash kids gig. While you're on the site, signing them up, maybe you or a teen in your house would like to help. Fun at this level can't happen without a small army of volunteers. Whether you want to help out on stage, in small groups, or just serving food, we need you. So if you or a teen in your house want to help us get the party started, sign up to serve today. Who's excited? You're excited. Who's excited? You're excited. Life can be tough sometimes, and we all face challenges like grief, depression, anxiety, addiction, or even just feeling lost. Here at Westside, we've created care groups with our community in mind. These groups are here to offer you a supportive environment where you can find encouragement and accountability as we navigate through life's emotional, behavioral, and spiritual challenges together. No matter what you're going through, there's likely a care group tailored to your needs right here. Join us in a space where we listen, understand, and uplift each other. Interested in joining one of our summer care groups? Visit westsidefamily.church slash care groups to learn more or sign up. Let's walk this journey together as a community. Come on, this is going to be fun. We need the whiteboard today. We got some chunky, dense passage to read. But first, but first, um, if you were part of the Masterpiece series where we looked at your, your passions, your skill sets, your giftings, and how you can collab with God in all the spaces he wants to bring his deep heart, we have what we call a pop-up serve opportunity starting today and then once a month thereafter. So here at Lenexa in the commons, we want to encourage you to go out after the service and um, find where that space is for you. And also at Speedway, we're asking you to do the same and then also online pop up and serve with us. We'd love to have you do that. Now, now, for this very dense passage out of Romans, I want to ask you if you are able and willing to stand with me, grab your old school Bibles or straight from your Westside app. You can read this with me or look up at the screen. The Apostle Paul gets into some dense material here, starting in verse 5, Romans chapter 8. Here we go. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however... Are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. That's a lot. There's a ton going on there. I want to just zero in, zoom right to verse 6. Here's where we're camping out, verse 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death. 
but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and what? Peace. Peace. Okay, you, you may have a seat. So right after the services today, my wife and I and two of our three teenage daughters were hopping in the minivan and we're driving seven hours to go look at a university. We are in college tour zone. Anybody there? Anybody? Anybody used to be there? So glad you're no longer there, <laughs> right? Anybody know you're going to be there sometime in your future? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in this place of, you know, reverie. You know, when you hit these milestones in your life, you, you tend to look back on your life on simpler times. Like when you came home, your daughters greeted you. Like when you asked them to do things, they did things that you asked them to do, like where you were kind of the hero. It's like, like here we are in this moment, feels very complex, and I just hearken back in my brain to those just what now I remember as sweet, innocent times where I had full control over everything, right? That, I just look back on those moments and times, and one of those things that's been popping back in my head as I read this text is we at night would do kind of a nighttime blessing and benediction or that, that, that ended in the word peace, and it came from the Old Testament, from Numbers chapter six, and it was, and, and sometimes we'll use it as a benediction here, may the Lord bless you and keep you, may the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious towards you, and may the Lord's countenance always be turned towards you and bring you peace. But because I'm a, a girl dad, unapologetically, I might add, um, I can't just say it to him, I got to put a little dance, a little spin, a little, a little flare. So every night that we would do this, it would be like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious towards you. And here's the Macarena move. May the Lord's countenance always be turned towards you and bring you peace. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. And it worked great back then. And back then it was so cute, they would do it with me and they'd get messed up and they had the cute little voices and the cute little dresses. And of course, we captured it on video. <laughs> but of course, I can't show it to you. Why? Because I'm contractually uh, uh, obliged. I'm, I'm, I'm locked up under an NDA with my three teenage daughters. I can't show you this video, but I can teach you. So if you're willing and able, back up on your feet. We're going to do this together, people. Let, we're going to do the, the church Macarena kind of blessing benediction from number six. Here we go. Just, just follow along. May the Lord, now lean into this, bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. And here it comes the rain. Be gracious towards you. May the Lord's countenance always be turned towards you and bring you, let's finish strong, peace. All right, hold your hand right here, right here to your heart if you would. And I just want to ask you this question as, as we pause here in just this moment. Here's what we know. Here's what we know, that, that we're an unhappy nation, that historically we've never been more pessimistic as a people, that anxiety is a runaway train. That depression is going off the charts. That we are riddled with strife, with striving, with so many things on our plate. And I just want to ask you, do you long for that kind of peace? Just hold your hand to your chest. And if that's true for you, just say yes. Yes, we just, we long for it. We need and Father, we just turned this into prayer. We just say, we need the peace of heaven to cascade like a waterfall into our hearts. We need the shalom that brings that deep peace with you, with others, with all creation and within our, ourselves where we would just be at rest within ourselves, Lord, free from worry. The arene, as it says in the Greek, that we would be experience your tranquility, your freedom from worry. Oh God, here today in this moment, we make space for you. We pause and we say, have your way here and now. Go to the deepest place. You're welcome into those places of our hearts and of our minds. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
You may have a seat. Hey, how, how do we know if we're experiencing peace? How do, just kind of what's, what's your baseline on peace? I actually, in my <clears throat> consulting line of work, I use a tool called the Peace Index, uh, interestingly enough. And, uh, and I want to just, as a diagnostic here now, just to get a baseline, I want to introduce to you the tool and just have a, and get a sense from you where you might stand in the area of your peace index, right? So we're going to look for an actual percentage score. I'm going to uh, explain the tool, and I want you to kind of be taking the diagnostic, if you would, uh, as, as we go along. And it starts with your purpose, do you know who you are, why you were made, and what you were made for? And every day you wake up just putting your hand to the plow with fire in your belly. That's your sense of, uh, and oftentimes, vocational purpose. Now, I've, I've not left myself much room, but if we go over here, here's place. That sense of, I feel like I belong in all the different places. I, I belong in my home, in my neighborhood, in my work. I have a sense of belonging and connectivity in my natural kind of environment. That's place. Down here is provision, that I feel well provided for by the Lord in all the different ways that I'm kind of seeking uh, my life and all the actually other areas that we'll talk about here. And the next is your personal health. Now, under this are a lot of things. Under this is your physical health, your emotional well-being, I'll just write P, emotional well-being, your intellectual well-being, and your spiritual well-being. It's all in there your personal health, and then lastly, your relationships. How are you doing in your key and important relationships? So here's how you're going to do this. You're going to go 0 to 100. What's your score here? 0 to 100, all the way around. And so if you're like in a conflict with somebody right now, this is probably going to be lower, right? If you, under place, if you like moved and you're now living in the basement of your in-laws and you're just living out of boxes, this score is gonna be like a 42 down here. Okay, you see how this is working? So you're gonna add up zero to 100, zero to 100, zero to 100 all the way, and then you're gonna divide by five, and yes, you may take out your phones if you need a little calculation help. So go ahead. I just want, I'm, and by the way, not gonna ask for your scores, not gonna ask for a show of hands. This is just for you to get a little bit of a baseline. I'm just gonna pause, give you only about 30 seconds just to write this down and, and add it up. All right, how many of you have a score? I know we're going fast, just show of hands. Not gonna ask what your score is, just that you have a score. You can keep kind of calculating this as, as you go along. And so here's what I do when I'm, when I'm meeting with clients or we do, do this with organizations or teams is we'll ask for uh, typically kind of a score and then we'll say, what was your high? And we'll celebrate like, hey, what, where are you rocking in that? And why is that so high? That's fantastic. And where are you low? And we'll talk about that. And then I'll typically ask this question. What's something you can do in the next 30 days to bump your score up from five or 10 points, right? And uh, we'll look at one of these areas and we'll build a little bit of an action plan. And I gotta tell you, here just in, you know, the confidence here in church is like, it's actually the wrong approach, according to Paul. And what I love about being able to gather together as the people of God is we can go deeper than some of the other places um, and actually get there faster. Because the apostle Paul in this passage that we just read, he says, look, there's two paths to peace. And so let's say this is you, or this is you, right? Here you are. And we all, 
So many of us, as we, as we pray, we, we want peace. We want peace in our relationships, peace in our purpose. We want peace in our provision and how well provided for. We want peace in all of these ways. And Paul says, I'm going to give you two paths to choose from. And do you, did you catch the theme as we read it? There was this toggling back and forth between two big words. Do you remember the first word? It was an F word. Flesh, right? And five times he talked about flesh. What was the other word that he contrasts? Spirit, right? Okay, so these are the two paths. Which one is the right one? Right, okay, we can just be done. All right, church over, brunch, let's go. But it's not really, it is that simple, yet let's unpack it. What is flesh? What does flesh mean? By the way, Paul is hearkening back to like, antiquity, there would be this contrast between flesh and spirit. Obviously, in the Old Testament, there would be this contrast to flesh and spirit. Is he saying that our bodies are bad and only spirit is good? No. Is he saying that we should get rid of all of our desire? Desire is bad? No, that's Eastern thought, and I know that's not good thinking because I have great desire for bacon, and that's holy. Okay? <laughs> so Paul must be talking about something else here. When he's talking about flesh, which is a very neutral term in the Greek, it's sarx, right? Which just kind of sounds like the name that Elon would name one of his next kids. But anyways, um, what is he talking about? Okay, so now if you've been to like a summer church camp and you hear the word flesh, what do you think they're really talking about? It's okay, you can say it here. Sex. Yes, sex. Let's just stay with the word lust, right? Thank you, bold man. <laughs> okay. And you're not wrong. You're actually kind of half right, but you're not wrong. Because what is, what is lust? Well, it's, it's not that sex is bad. Sex bad? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But what makes it bad is when it is a misguided pursuit of pleasure. When it is a misappropriation and a disproportion towards the more that we all desire. That's when it gets funky, okay? So that's what it is. Paul talks about this. The Bible talks about it. The, even there's the phrase, the acts of the flesh, right? So, so we get that. Paul in Galatians kind of gives a list of when these things go awry. Look at this with me. Galatians chapter five. Here's what Paul says. The acts of the flesh, there it is, are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I just like how he finishes. Oh, and there's so many more things we can talk about. What's important for you and I is any one of us exonerated from this list. And he just kind of throws it all in there. I mean, I wish he'd just take a few of them out and then I'd go, yeah, I don't know that I struggle with that. But I pretty much like... I'm hitting, I don't know, four out of the eight or nine. So this is something that we go, all right. And what leads to all those things? Everybody wants to get here. Everyone wants, gets, gets here. Now, so that is part of the false path. But there's a second one that maybe we don't think about when we think about the word flesh as it's used in the scripture. And it's this. Law. Law is the misguided pursuit of our own goodness. If this is about the, the, the misguided pursuit of more, more pleasure, this is the misguided pursuit of our own morality. And Paul talks about this from his own life in Philippians chapter three. Check this out with me. Here's what he says. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, there it is again, same word, I have more confidence. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm from the people of Israel. I'm from the right tribe. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. In regard to the, there it is, the law, I'm a Pharisee. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. As for righteousness, based on the law, I was faultless. He goes on to say, but I consider it all rubbish, trash, when compared to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. But he gives his pedigree. He gives his whole path to morality and says it was for naught. Now, what's interesting Who's Paul talking to as he's writing to the church in Rome? He's talking to essentially two categories of people, the Gentiles and the Jews. What did the Jews care about? What did the Gentiles, categorically speaking, 
how, you know, what was often described as the pagans. What did they go after? Right. Okay. So Paul is talking to this, um, to this mix of people and he's trying to say, there's only one path and actually you all can join it and be aligned together in it. But he's trying to bring everybody into this place of coming up against their own walls. If you're pursuing lust, and remember, you gotta just go, this word is, I, here's what gets me every time. Do I struggle with lust? Yes. I have a lust for people's approval. Hmm, see what I mean? I have a, a lust for um, closing that next contract. Right? I, I have a sense of wanting to take control in my flesh of all the things I can't control about my daughter's lives. If I want to get really worked up and anxious, I think about college tours, provision. College tours, provision. You see? <laughs> I think about the proposal I worked on all of yesterday for, for a prospect, and I think about, oh, I don't know if that's going to come through, and I don't know how that's going to hit there. You see, if it's all about me pursuing the misguided pursuit of more, it's ultimately going to come up against a wall. And I don't know how this looks for you. What do you feel if you just stop for a moment and go, I've been running the rat race, and I'm really tired, and man, I just can't get here. What's the feeling that you, you kind of come up against? There's all sorts, right? There's, there's fear, there's agitation, but at, at the core, we just feel this sense of despair. Can you relate to that? Now, when we just go, but man, I, I want to pursue peace by being so right in the eyes of God, by pursuing my own morality, my own good, this, this misappropriated sense of wanting being in right standing with God, what does that lead to? Its own brick wall. I'll give you two words. Either you think you've gotten there and you're smug, and who likes being with smug people? Not me. Or you experience great shame because you know you can't get there and there's, there's just you're overwhelmed by guilt and carrying all these things that you know that you don't measure up. And that brings you no peace as well. Interestingly, Jesus tells a story about these two false paths. You know what it's called? The prodigal sons, the prodigal sons, it's not the story of the, the prodigal son, it's the story of two sons that both pursued their own path, but they were both wrong and they both hit a dead land and they both ended up outside the house and away from the party of God. They just chose two different paths. Which one do you most often choose? Just gonna take it by my own, I'm gonna pull myself up by my own bootstraps and I'm gonna be good. Or I'm gonna win and I'm gonna work this thing out. And it all comes from the same place of this self-automation. And the truth is, it's not gonna bring you the peace that you're looking for. It never will. And that's why Paul offers us this path. That, by the way, the rest of the world's never gonna offer you this third way. Think about, think about advertising for a second. It is all about hitting this right here so that you can have better relationships, so that you can have uh, more provisions, so that you can have more things in your house. I mean, it's just, it's the empire of illusion, as one author would put it. And there's religious, all sorts of religious commercials and, and things that will hit on this part too. I don't hear anyone saying, but there's the very spirit of God who lives in you. And I just have to tell you, for much of my life of following Jesus and leading others in Jesus, I didn't know much about this path. I believed it theologically, but with some sort of reticence, because it always represented for me a few things. One is I saw really wacky demonstrations of people being in the spirit. I'm like, I don't want that. But even deeper, it represented for me this surrender, this needing to let go, control, and I didn't want that. And I think theologically, I was raised in a context where I had the Trinity all wrong. It was Father, Son, and Scripture. I love the Scriptures. They come from Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But the Spirit of God was never something that, that I really paid much attention to. 
until um, I hit a wilderness season in my life, much like Joseph did. Do you know the story of Joseph? Man, I can so identify with him. He's just chock full of all hubris and dreams, and he's super talented, and he's a people pleaser, and his brothers can't stand him, so they drop kick him down a well, they sell him into slavery, he gets caught up in this Me Too movement, falsely accused, ends up in prison, keeps thinking that if he could just interpret the Pharaoh's dreams, they'll recognize him and go, oh yeah, this guy's got a lot going on, he's like, look at me, I can do this, look at me, I can do this, look at me, I can do this. Until one day, decades later, being bitten, beaten down and coming up against the wall of his own self-limitations, when asked to interpret the Pharaoh's dreams again, he finally says these words, not I, but God can. The Pharaoh was super restless, had such a low peace quotient, needed peace, asked Joseph, can you bring that peace? And finally he got it. I'm not gonna do this through my flesh. I'm not gonna do this through just trying to people please or getting this right. Actually, only the Lord can do this. And I can so relate to that. I've always fancied myself as the one who, you know, is successful, is the one that always is the head of the pack, is the one that when the chips are down, you figure it out. Even in my spiritual journey, I was that way. But there was a season in my life where I couldn't. There was a season in my life where I got to this place in my life and I said, uh, I've got a good life, why don't I like my life? I got to this place where the, um, the bar graph was starting to go down and not up and to the right. I got to this place in my life where I became self-absorbed in my flesh trying to figure it all out. And I didn't know my way out. And I remember I was driving to this prayer retreat that I didn't want to go to. But I knew that I needed breakthrough. And I remember I was about 10 minutes away from arriving at this retreat center. And I'm on the phone with my wife. And she just offered me the most beautiful encouragement. She just said, if you sense the spirit of God moving, just go with it. I arrive, I'm late, it's a room full of 60 or 70 people, I know maybe half of them. And, and then the, the guy leading it is a friend of mine, he kind of says, here's what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make space for the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, I, I felt three things. One is I felt so vulnerable so vulnerable. And then I heard, and I really believe I heard this from the Lord, I, I heard the words, it is safe here. And then, don't do this alone. Those are three things. I just felt so vulnerable, but I just felt like you can trust the people in this room, but don't try to do this alone. And I hesitate to even share more of this story because uh, it's just what happened for me. It's like one moment in my 50 years of life and it looks different for everybody. But I, I went over to my friend Adam and I said, would you pray with me? And would you get John? And would you pray with me? And then I just lost it. I mean, like for two hours I lost it. I mean, like, the session ended. Everyone went to lunch. I'm on the floor, and there's just, like, tissues all around. Um, here's, a, here's a picture that someone graciously captured. And you try to make sense what was happening in that moment, and I'll just tell you all sorts of things. I was, um, there was healing happening. There was pain coming out. Um, there was confession of all of this trying to do things in my own strength. There was repentance. And 
And then came freedom. A confidence. A sweetness. And a new, a new journey with the Spirit of God, the one that is described of carrying all the characteristics of peace that you and I want. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, self-control. All the things that the world is hungering for and that you and I so deeply desire, it's in you. For anyone who is following Jesus, the Spirit of God resides in you. And that was true for me before this moment. But there was a new moment of surrender where I just needed to say, not I, but God. Not I, but God. And I want to I wanna invite each and every one of you here at Lenexa Speedway online community. We want to just simply make space for the Spirit of God to roam. And so, if you're feeling a sense of vulnerability right now, if you're feeling a sense of kind of frail, we brought the lights down, by the way, because we don't want this to be a, um, an, a, a big showy thing. We just want to create space for for each of us to say spirit of living God not I but you make space and you're free to roam here and there was something about me getting up out of my chair and not doing it alone that's the part I want to challenge you in I want to say, if you want more peace and you're tired of going the way of lust or the law and you're going, you tell me there's a third way, I hunger for that. And I, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to ask, we have some prayer partners and we want to ask them to come down right here. There is something about physically making space for the Spirit of God. I'm going to ask you to come down, put your hand back over your heart, and we're going to just simply pray with you as music quietly comes. So if you're like, I need that, I want that, not I, but God, I'm going to ask you, would you stand and would you come down, and we want to pray with you. Would you come now? We're just going to allow time to linger. You can pray from right where you are. Speedway, I'm going to encourage you, come on down. South Sanctuary, come on down. Online community, you can just put, um, click on the little link, and we'll create a private prayer space for you. Or you can pray for someone that's come down and just ask, Holy Spirit, would you roam freely?
If you are able, will you stand with us and put your hand back over your heart? And if <laughs> Holy Spirit, we love this truth. That as the psalmist says, when my anxious mind multiplies worry within me, it's your consolation, oh God, that brings us peace. That we don't have to do anything. We don't have to work ourselves out of it. We don't have to pull ourselves up. We don't have to dig ourselves out of a pit. We don't have to undo all the mess. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to carry it alone, God. We simply just, in our inner spirit, we turn to your spirit that dwells in us. And we say, here, here, have this, have this thing, have my past, have my despair, have my hope, have my kids, have my job here. And in the blink of an eye, the peace of Christ falls. And we're reminded that we're not alone and that it's safe here with your spirit residing. And so Jesus, over all of us here in this room and beyond this room, we think of how you breathed peace onto your disciples. And as the one seated on the throne today, we say, breathe your peace still and now. Holy Spirit, come. Would you just say that, those words? Holy Spirit, come. Say it again. Holy Spirit, come. You are welcome here and you're free to roam. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen.
Savior. If the Lord is moving on your heart this morning and you want to know more about baptism and following Jesus, we have deacons in red shirts in the commons. They are ready to receive you. And if you are visiting for the first time or if you are new here, we want you to go out to the Connection Center. After this service, there is a green banner that says new here. We want you to get four things in four minutes about this church for you and your family to grow in your faith. And if you have been at Westside for a while now and you are ready for more, go out to the orange banner. It says ready for more. We're going to give you some resources to help you refresh and recharge your faith. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next week for more. See you next time. Hey, Westside, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully you found some peace in that message. I uh, appreciate Dan for really going there and making space for it. Uh, I'm joined by, there's, uh, well, aside from my dad, there's two other dads that I text on Father's Day and say thank you. And one of them is this one. It's you, Floyd. Yeah, thank you. There's not a lot. That. It's you and Keith Jones. It's, <laughs> those are the two guys that I text and say thank you. So um, what's been, well, what's your reaction to this message, to the message of more peace? I think it was very uh, relevant to the times that we're living in now. Mm. And I think something that we all are striving for to, to seek peace, whether it's health, financial. I, mean, I think he hit all the topics mm -hmm. today. I think he did, he did a great job. Yeah, I mean, I think these are certainly things that people purpose, place, provision, physical health, people. I mean, I, I if I was a betting man, I would bet that most people are struggling with three out of five of those mm -hmm. at any mo mm -hmm. at any moment in yeah. your lives. Definitely. And I think this is a, when he kind of was talking about advertising, and all I could think of was when I see advertising now is it it used to be we're older. It mm -hmm. used to be the product, right? It was, they were right. selling you Folgers coffee or something like mm -hmm. that. And now it's the, it's all about the emotion. Right. And I don't, I've never been smiling and eating Taco Bell. So I don't know how, <laughs> certainly not smiling later on in the day, but they're, they're, they're trying to sell you this emotion. And I think that's a little bit of what he was saying was that illusion of oh this is the thing that's gonna make me i can go buy the thing that makes me happy right. i think that's what um i know a lot of students hang out in this service that they're getting from i don't know the tiktok generation where it's like oh i have this car oh i live on the beach right and i don't know i'd love to hear what your experience is but my experience is if i'm unhappy i'm just gonna be unhappy on the beach or i'm gonna be <laughs> driving right. faster in a car i'm also still unhappy so right. what's what's that experience been like for you well you know i think you know you have americans striving for the american dream mm -hmm. you know the you know two cars yeah you know three three kids um and i think earlier um as we were getting started in, in life that was kind of our pursuit mm -hmm. you know you, you pursue a successful life to where you can provide for your family and then uh you know, but then you get that frustration, kind of like, uh, almost like living in the flesh, where you you strive and strive, but you never quite get there, and mm -hmm. you're always frustrated. And I think that's when um, you start seeing what's really important in life, and it's not the cars, it's not the house, but it's God, Christ, and relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the key. I think one thing that hit me when he was talking about always feeling like you need to be in control mm, mm -hmm. and it just builds frustration. <clears throat> and I just remember uh, when the kids were small, you always wanted that perfect family. Mm -hmm. Kids are totally obedient. You know, you say this, they do it. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Uh, but that's not reality. Yeah. And, uh, and then every kid is different. Mm -hmm. You know, one kid, you know, you do X, Y, Z, it runs smooth. The next kid's totally different. And I think, that whole experience is a part of learning to let go mm -hmm. and let God just guide by the Spirit. Yeah, you know, and and build that relationship. Yeah, for sure. I I, I feel like I've ran into that same thing where you just get to the end and you go, I guess I have to do more now. <laughs> like the piece ran out with that pass, so now, now I have to take it to a more extreme level. And certainly, I found myself just going, I don't know how many times I can 
ratchets this up without getting arrested. Like we're going to start getting <laughs> towards some illegal activities if we keep going in this direction. Um, did you take the peace thing? Did you find a, how would you rate yourself? You don't have to share any right details, now? but oh, right. where well, are you, you know, at peace wise? I mean, the kids aren't at you're home. Putting, you're putting me on the spot. No. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, generally I'd like to see myself doing a lot better. I, you know, I you know I had some high, very highs and some very, you know some kind of lows. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually gonna give myself about a seventy percent. Okay, about a C. That's a good seventies uh, for a great decade. <laughs> I think safe. you're all right. It's safe. Um, you know, I think um, you know work actually is going a lot better because as I get older in my career, sure. Um, you know the you start relying on God more, not the paycheck, not the boss's approval. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think. Um, you know, everyone in, in where I work at kind of understand, hey, I'm not going to get frustrated, very frustrated about many things. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll just, you know, do my job, do quality work, and then let the chips fall. Mm. Uh, and that's all I can do. I can control what I can control. Sure. And then the rest is in God's hands. Um, it's interesting because... Uh, as as you get older and your kids leave the house, you start reflecting a lot. Okay. You know, what could I have done better? How's my relationship with now? And I think with my relationship with God, I'm learning that we're never going to be perfect, but we always want to keep short accounts with God, us and God, and then us and our relationships with our kids and, and our, our spouse. Yeah. Um, and then with my kids... You know, as I got older, I learned to be more transparent with my own mistakes mm, mm-hmm. rather than thinking I'm on this pedestal. Mm-hmm. But you talk to them as an adult and then you share, hey, here's what I did. Here's where I blew it. You know, here's my advice for you in that situation. But it's your decision. Mm-hmm. You know, so you just treat them differently. And then it's interesting because as you become more transparent, um, they respect you more. Mm. You know, as mm-hmm. they get older and they, you know, you're not on this pedestal giving, <laughs> yeah, giving them advice, sure. but you're more, uh, you know, level adult to adult. And that's, that's been an interesting transition and it's, um, uh, gives you kind of peace in your relationship with your kids mm-hmm. because, uh, it's more at, a, at an even level and more transparent. And I think that's the key with any relationship is just being transparent, um, yeah, it's interesting because I was thinking, what, what do I talk go talk about when I get here? Yeah, and you know, and uh, I realized the importance of relationships, even in a in a discipleship mentoring relationship amongst men, peer men in mm-hmm. general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was just thinking, you know, what if David had a had a commandant who could have advised him before he met Bathsheba? Mm-hmm. Bathsheba. Mm-hmm. You know, what if he had someone said, hey, David, let's sit down and talk. Yeah. Yeah, how his life could have been different. The whole Absalom mm-hmm. Absalom uh, incident, the whole leaving the castle, that could have all been reversed if he just had a friend that he could share his deepest temptations. Sure. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. I think that's some very important uh, that we're transparent with others to, to keep us grounded and, and humble, you know, humble. Yeah, uh, and it's so important, and that's certainly what you find in in student ministry. Anytime I had a conversation with somebody, it was just like, this is where I messed up. I just don't want right. you to go down this. Right. I went down the path similar, right. and it right. just dead ended. Mm-hmm. And then I tried another path, which you might think about taking. Right. That also did exactly. end. <laughs> you know, and it, it was just definitely a cautionary tale of just going like, you know, I at some point you get to the end of your abilities and you just go, all right, I push it as far as I can go. And I, there's yeah. nowhere yeah. to go. And yeah. it, it, it just, it just ends in a way. So what, what is it? Uh, Dan kind of mentioned, uh, he didn't mention the kind of church he grew up in, but I have an idea when mm-hmm. he said the father, the son and the scripture instead of the Holy spirit. Right. What, what's that been like for you as a follower of Christ, your relationship with the Holy spirit? What's that? Well, okay, so I grew up in a traditionally Baptist church, um, predominantly black Baptist gospel, you know, gospel music and all that. Um, And, you know, I had friends who were part of the holiness church, so you heard, 
you know, getting speaking in tongues, mm-hmm. getting into the mm-hmm. spirit, and yeah. so you did kind of shy away from the spirit. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you see somebody get happy <laughs> at church, um, and and you know, and I'm saying, I'm just saying, people experience the spirit in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as I grew in my relationship with Christ, I learned to listen for the spirit. Mm. Just in my daily walk, you know, talk to that person about Christ or don't say that, Floyd. <laughs> you know, and then, and I think that's when yeah. you try and be more sensitive because he is a comforter, he is a guide, he does direct, and I think it's our job to listen for that spirit so mm. we know how to do it and just kind of. Sometimes you just kind of give up and you say, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Christ, lead me, show me. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, lead me. And I think that's, and that's kind of where I am now is uh, trying to live life no fear, but humbly listen mm-hmm. to the Spirit as he guides me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, talking about peace, I think... Uh, as I have more time, I try and spend more time in the Word, and that's mm-hmm. where my peace comes from. Mm-hmm. Just uh, communing with God and praying in the Spirit, praying for things that I don't even know what I'm praying about, but mm-hmm. just help me, mm-hmm. help guide. What what should I say? What should right. I, how should I pray? Yeah, you know. So well, I think there's this <clears throat> there's this other S word that he didn't write up there that um, is stress. Mm. But there is, I, I know people will say like stress is bad, but there's actually, there's that middle ground right here where you feel your best. There's a certain amount of stress that mm-hmm. helps you uh, operate life, helps you do good, do a good sure. job. There's a, a zone in there that you kind of want to be in because if you have zero stress, that's not great. That's right. where your purpose, your peace and your purpose is going to feel, you're going to feel like right. you're not making any kind of difference. Sure. But if it swings the other direction, right, your total percentage of peace will go down because you're overly stressed. Right. So there is an amount of stress that that zone you want to be in. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes what we can do is we can get stuck in thinking the stress, it's like meta, the stress about stress. You're stressed <laughs> that you think there's going to be stress coming, right, right. <laughs> coming up. And I, I think sometimes you just want to, um, like you were t- saying with the spirit is you just want to sit like, do I have to make a move right now? And if the answer is no, then don't make a move. Right. Just be like, all right, I'm, I just know this about myself. I'm not going to make my best decisions if I'm feeling very stressed out. So let's just not make any decisions mm-hmm. at this moment. Right. Let's take 12, 24, 36 hours and just be still with it. If you have the luxury, I know some people don't, mm-hmm. but sometimes you just go, all right, I would really love to not have to make this decision. Maybe some more information will become available. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because sometimes we make a decision and we go, ah, sure. and, and then you go, then you find out one more thing and you go, oh, I think I would have done something different. Right, right. You know, oh, so they weren't actually trying to be a horrible human being. There was just a miscommunication. I shouldn't, can I unsend that text? Is it too right, late right. To, yeah. well, to men in black it from their brain? Yeah. Like just delete that moment? Well, my wife is good at that because uh, sometimes I'll feel one way and I'll say, you know, I want to send this email mm-hmm. or I want to call this person right now and I'll say, here's what I'm going to say. I'll kind of rehearse it with, to my wife and she's like, no. Better not, send, better not send that text. You can write it, just don't get sent. Sure. Um, and yeah, and and there's wisdom in listening to your spouse. You know, God mm-hmm. God uses your spouse to give you some wisdom when you need it. That's why I married a professional. <laughs> she has a master's degree. Oh, great. So yeah. it's it's very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> it's very yeah. helpful to her and me because we can come at things from oh, both sure, sides. sides. Sure. You know, she's like, hey, this is... You know, sure. and I think what I've really leaned into is if it's an important conversation, do your best to have it in person. Oh yeah, I think definitely. just because definitely with, old school do with old school. texting or emailing, <laughs> right? I a letter could probably feel passive aggressive at this point. <laughs> you know, yeah. So having so so they can see that um, my face sure. uh, and hear my uh, unemotional voice. Sure. I just go, oh, well, okay, makes a huge I see difference. what you're saying. And I think the generation now, the next generation, and just everything's texting, email, 
and there's not as much face to face that I think there should be just because you know you, you do look at body language mm-hmm. <laughs> don't say that because he's, he's not listening sure um, yeah so yeah definitely well a great a great movie that uh, our kids are focused on right now is Alexander and the Horrible No Good Terrible Very Bad Day okay. you probably read yeah, that book to your yeah. kids but there's a movie with Steve Carell and our kids love watching that movie right now and I think part of it is that exposure type therapy like stuff's going wrong but it's not happening to me okay but right. they get to see how these people react to uh, a car door getting ripped off the battery dead on their car an alligator in their house <laughs> spoiler alert you know what i mean like they get to see how people are reacting and that's why usually i try not to let them just watch it over and over right. but this one i'm kind of letting go just because they get to see, and Steve Carell's character is very calm through the whole. He's like, "You got uh, it, buddy. Okay. You got uh, it, buddy." Cool. But then at one point, he he loses it, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And and his family comes around him, and hopefully the takeaway for them is like, we're all gonna be that at some point in our lives. We're just gonna have, just be stressed out beyond belief, and then we, then we can look to the person next to us, or we can reach out to a friend and just say, "Hey." I need you to come around me right now. And mm-hmm. I think that's what Dan was saying in that mm-hmm. moment of vulnerability yeah. is like you, and sometimes it's, you don't even need to know everything. I just know like, Hey, I need to be, I need you to be here. Mm-hmm. And especially if it's one of those deep grief moments, like you don't have to say anything. You don't have to come up with a Bible verse. Just know like, Hey, we are in grief or we're stressed mm-hmm. and I, you just need to be here. Right. No, definitely. Um, and it, it does, that kind of works in a in a uh, secular professional field where they see how you handle stress mm. and they see that you don't get amped up very often, um, and then that can be a good segue into you know why is that, mm. and then you can share your your walk with Christ. One thing I want to, to talk about is uh, when you brought up uh, you know no stress versus that finding that yeah, sweet yeah. spot. And I think for me. Um, you know, when you get into the people pleaser mode, uh, instead of the God pleasing mode, then you get into, you know, what can I do more for my boss? What can I do more, you know, for this person, that person? And that is stressful. And uh, I think when you try and listen to the spirit and please God, and he's your number one audience, mm-hmm. then you do kind of find that, okay, I need to share my faith i need to get into the bible um because it's the right thing to do um and it's, it's like that healthy tension mm-hmm. you know to where you're doing what what you know you need to do and then that's where actually doing that and fulfilling that purpose brings upon the peace because you feel like hey god's using me mm-hmm. um where I don't know what he's doing, what yeah. his plan is, yeah. but it's a great ride. Yeah, and uh, I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah, so, I love it, uh, and I think that's I think that's so true. And I, I think what what Dan is saying is there is a path to peace, but it's not a shortcut. Mm-hmm. If Definitely. you're looking for peace in these areas, it's not uh, it's not gonna you're not gonna find it on a reel where like here's five tips right. to have more peace in your life. He's not selling it like that. He's saying, you know, if you're to go after purpose that's the long game if you're if you're if you're want peace with people that's tough sure. living with people is tough sure. my wife can attest to that she's lived with me for 14 <laughs> years <laughs> i'm not an easy person to live with i wake up way no one should wake up as early as i wake up <laughs> on purpose it's ridiculous but provision i mean everybody is feeling that right mm-hmm. now i think that's a piece that people are looking for and then physical yeah. health is just one of those things that can sneak up on you if it if it hasn't sure. been in in your focus right you just go what happened? oh what holy happened? cow <laughs> you know? 20 years ago i was in like, shape like yeah i played baseball <laughs> yeah when i was 12 <laughs> that was decades ago yeah so um it's um it can be one of those things that you just um and maybe uh maybe for you it's you need to write these down on a note card and put it uh, in your car, my, my mom would use those cards to cover up, uh, indicator lights, that the, <laughs> the car's going to die. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend that. I can't have any lights on in my car. It drives me nuts now, but you know, maybe put it on your mirror or make it your home screen. 
that you're praying for peace in these places and Mm -hmm. just just know and sometimes you can get especially with people you can go oh it's not me it's them they're Mm -hmm. the ones disturbing the peace and i I, i'm pretty sure the bible says as far as as long as it depends on me yeah i will choose peace with these people and so that's why i think those in-person interactions are so valuable because that's if your love language is quality time, that's quality time right, right. with people. Exactly. Yeah, and one thing I do want to bring up, and I think they're going to talk about this next week maybe, is the healthy yeah. ba- healthy boundaries. Mm, you mm-hmm. know? Um, For sure. Because there's certain people <clears throat> that... <laughs> Was that on purpose? No, no, no. no. Oh, said, no. That's no, not no, peaceful, not Floyd. All. Not at all. <laughs> no, but there's certain people in your life where you do extend the olive branch, um, but it comes back void. Mm. Um, and that's fine. And right. that's But, but that's it you does need to initiate. The piece. You need to, yeah, you need to initiate. You need to not have those ill feelings, you know, and uh, I think that's another path to peace, not, you know, not having those ill feelings towards others, mm. even if, you know, they don't reciprocate. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and then sometimes there's that healthy boundaries where, you know, you help people as much as you can. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, but then, you know, if, if there's a, uh, I don't know what, how I want to say this, but more of a detrimental to your own health mm-hmm. where it's like, Hey, I can do this, but I can't do this. Or here's some other resources. I'd love to help you, but I, you know, I've mm-hmm. done all I can. Here's some resources yeah. that you can reach out to. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I think Satan wants to make us feel guilty mm. for not being able to do everything. Yeah. But then I think there's a point where we say, you know, you need to seek God for that assistance, not me. Right. I've done what I can. Mm-hmm. You need to go a step further and, and seek the Lord and see see what he wants you do, to do for your next step, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of, you know, you want to give, but you also have to keep yourself healthy. As well. Yeah. To give to give to others. Otherwise, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I agree. And, and sometimes that, con- and sometimes even that conversation, I know I said in person, sometimes mm-hmm. that's not an in-person conversation. Right. Sometimes you just go... If I try to have it, it's just going to explode right. it even more. Yeah. So you know what? I'm just going to fade back. I'm, I'm going to text less. I'm going to call less. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hang out less. We'll revisit this in six months or a year right. and see where things are at. See we'll test goes. the waters. But sometimes it's not even having that that movie conversation where are like, this friendship is <laughs> over. You know, sometimes, it, sometimes it's just fading back and right. just go, okay, I'm going to pull back. It's been very one-sided. If they're not reaching out to me, I feel like, I still care about them, mm-hmm. but I, for me, I need and to pull pray. back and, 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 that's a, and pray you about pray. that, yeah. you know? So, well, thank you so much uh, for being here, for sharing your wisdom, um, <laughs> for sharing your wisdom with me. You shared a lot of stuff with me over the years that has been uh, tremendously helpful um, in my wife tolerating me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, and appreciate all, everything you do for, um, for the next generation, for students. You. you just set such a great example. And, I, and what we were talking about before we started was it's not perfect, but, hey, there's a transparency like, hey, here's where I messed up and I need to ask for forgiveness, right. you know, with the people in your life. And you exemplify that. So thank you for thank being you. that person. Thank you. It's good yeah. seeing you. Yeah. Good talking to you. It's good chatting <laughs> with you. We're coming back next week. Dan Diebel is back again, so probably more whiteboard next week. <laughs> that sounds so good. We'll keep it going. But appreciate you. you guys. Uh, take a step this week towards peace. Write those things down. Keep it in front of you and just go, how can I be a peacemaker this week? Amen. Amen. Thanks, Floyd. Thank you.